10 top tips for using domotics. Number 1. Use dummy switches. Creating a dummy switch is just like adding a manual switch to domotics. Remember that to have this functionality you must activate it as a hardware device. Dummy switches can be used to keep track of the status of your home. I use them to keep track of time, for example if night mode or day mode is enabled, and a feature that we both use in our home a lot, the countdown function which flashes lights when a user set timer has elapsed. Just as effective but less intrusive than a phone timer. Chain several dummy switches together and your scripts will become easier than ever to create. Number 2. Use scripting. Scripting is by far the most powerful capability of Demotics, and investing some time into learning how to use Lua, for example, will pay dividends and help you to create a truly smart home. Scripting has helped me in the smooth running of our smart home in countless ways. Here are a few examples. I bought a 433 MHz water leak sensor and hot glued it into a plastic tray, placing the tray beneath the waste pipe of our washing machine that had occasionally leaked in the past. Now, when even a small amount of water is detected in the tray, the sensor sends a message, Demotics receives the message, and then immediately switches off the washing machine power, and at the same time sends out an email to us to tell us what has happened. When leaving the flat for the day, a script is used to switch off all unneeded lights and devices. Another script then waits for 10 minutes before activating the home security mode, which is yet another script in Demotics. The home security mode determines what time of day it is and adjusts sensitivity accordingly. We have a cat, and if all security devices were active during the day, the system would trip multiple times as she moves about the flat and jumps onto surfaces. A dummy switch called Cat Sitter can be switched on to let the system know we're away for a night and that somebody will be coming in to feed the cat. A further script is triggered by the sensor on the front door and when open switches on lights and kitchen devices, switches the power to the TV on and increases the temperature if necessary. And a message is also emailed to us so that we know our fur baby is being looked after. Number 3. Backup regularly. I use Demotics on the latest Raspberry Pi but there are still opportunities for the system to crash. If this happens, there is a chance that either the Demotics database or the disk image itself will be unreadable the next time Demotics starts up. So I made a quick risk matrix in my head and decided on my own timescales for backups. You may decide that this is too cautious or not cautious enough. Firstly, I back up the Demotics database around once a month, less often if I haven't added any new devices in the last few months. But the database contains a lot of useful information and history on all the devices you have added. The backup takes a few minutes. In your computer's browser, you can download the database and save it onto a network drive and forget about it unless you need to resurrect Demotics. Secondly, I save all my scripts and custom HTML about once every couple of months. Again, this doesn't take too long and will save a lot of time if they're accidentally deleted. To do this, I use WinSCP to copy all scripts and then paste them into a backup folder on my computer. Lastly, I take a complete disk image of the system every quarter. This takes significantly longer than the other two backups mentioned, but it means that should the system corrupt completely, you can erase the SD card and re-image it to bring it right back to where it was. Demotics, database, custom HTML, custom bash scripts, and all programs you have saved on your system at once. I use Win32 Disk Imager for this. It takes a few minutes to copy the image onto a computer, and then it takes longer for me to then store the image onto a network drive. A good article on how to clone your Raspberry Pi SD card for super easy recovery is on the lifehacker.com website. A link is in the description below. Other members of the Demotics community have several automated ways to back up their Demotics system regularly, so visit the forum for more information on this. Number 4. Check out the forum for help and inspiration. Speaking of the forum, the Demotics forum is an excellent source of information, and whatever issues you may be having, you can almost certainly guarantee that someone else has asked or addressed the question before. 
There is also a section dedicated to users sharing their success stories, which is very motivating. As a new user, you don't have to be daunted by the technical speak. There are always users available to answer your query or point you in the right direction using understandable and accessible language. Demotics is a worldwide community and it's great to see so many people with a passion for custom smart homes. Number five, use the inbuilt web server to its full potential. You can place custom HTML pages into the www folder of Demotics and navigating to the Demotics server will show those HTML pages. I use this all the time for static tablets around the flat showing information and allowing us to issue commands without having to look on our mobile phones or consult with a smart speaker every time. You can customise the look and feel of a home control system to anything you like. I've worked my way through at least 25 designs, much to my roomie's entertainment and sometimes confusion. I have mentioned this before in previous videos. I'm a huge fan of Demotics. If anything, the one possible negative of the system is its limited interface. This can be solved with a bit of HTML and the fact that Demotics switches can be accessed from HTML calls meaning you can create a screen that looks exactly how you want it to and then attach commands to clickable images or text that trigger Demotics switches. You can even poll Demotics switches or variables and then insert them directly into your HTML. Number six, use physical buttons when you can. Lights and audio are two areas that immediately benefit from having physical buttons. There are many wireless solutions that are compatible with Demotics, such as the Lightwave RF mood controllers. These have six buttons, two large and four small, so can control multiple devices from one pad. You can create custom overlays such as these ones to ensure users know what will happen when a button is pressed. This pad was created to help me begin online meetings. Another video will cover this in more detail. Number seven, make use of dusk and dawn times. For lights such as balcony lights or garden lights, you may want to switch them on a few minutes before dusk and only when the property is occupied. Likewise, you may want to simulate occupation of the property just before dusk when there's no one home. You can create dummy switches which turn on 30 minutes before dawn using the timer function as shown here. This can then be used in your triggered scripts, things that happen as soon as the dummy switch is turned on, or in decision scripts, those that look at the current state of your dummy switches to determine what happens next. I've called the switch var dusk to remind me that the dummy switch contains a variable I may want to use in my scripts. For example, this script happens automatically when var dusk switch is activated. Number eight, group and name your devices logically. There are plenty of ways you can group your devices in Demotics. The most straightforward way is to group them into rooms. That way you can narrow down your switches to a room by choosing from the drop down and then only relevant switches and controls will appear. You can also use this feature to group by activity rather than room and switches can appear in more than one group. So for example, your underfloor heating controls may appear in the room where the heating is available, but in another room called heating where all the heating controls are stored. Naming your devices is also crucial, especially as your smart home empire becomes larger. There is always the risk of duplicating device names. Number nine, use the log. The log is there to help you, showing the decisions Demotics is making and any internal errors that are being captured. Take a look at the log, especially when you've created new scripts. If there are any syntax errors in your new script, it won't be long before Demotics tells you about them. You can also see if Demotics is receiving commands that you are trying to transmit, and also see which devices are logging into the system. If you use Lua as your scripting language, any print commands that are in your script will write to the log. So when programming a new feature to your smart home, you can use print statements to follow the logic and ensure the script is running as you intended it to. Number 10, less is sometimes more. A truly smart home requires little input from its non-technical users. Use every tool at your disposal to minimize the likelihood of someone needing to interact with Demotics. This might sound counterintuitive, but just like a car engine or a healthy kidney, 
you don't need to know how it works to benefit from its complexity. With motion sensors, knowledge of the current time of day and who is occupying the home, true smart routines can be created. Life is complicated enough, use domotics to simplify it. Do you have any other tips you'd like to share? Please comment, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.